שלום לכם אחים ואחיות, עוד יום חדש שאדון... And they that are of Christ, Jesus have crucified the flesh with the passions and lusts thereof. We spoke about denying the flesh. When we have a choice to follow the Spirit in the guidance of the Holy Spirit or to walk according to the lusts of the flesh and the soul, we are called to deny the flesh in our soul and say no and yes to the guidance that the Holy Spirit gives us in our lives. Now I want to continue in verse 25. Paul the Apostle, or the Holy Spirit through Paul, says, If we live by the Spirit, by the Spirit let us also walk. If we are a spiritual people that live in the Holy Spirit, it needs to manifest itself in our walking. So let us also walk by the Spirit. So it talks how do we behave. And it will manifest itself in the fruit of the Spirit that grows in our lives. And it also says in verse 26, let us not become vainglorious, provoking one another and envying one another. So it specifically emphasizes uh, pride to differ from humility and from self-control and love when we love the other. And all the things that we learned about uh, pursuing peace and the fruit of peace, all these things are standing in great contrast to the pursuit of glory, the competition, and maybe hurting other people, the ego wars, and envying and causing envy, all these things are from the flesh. These are negative things, and the love, the peace, the meekness, self-control, they all come from the Spirit. And we are called to walk by the Spirit, and not in the flesh. If we will live by the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now I want to expand this idea of walking in the Spirit. And let's let us turn to Romans chapter 8. And we will read from verse 12, but mainly 14. So then, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live in the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit ye be put to death, the deeds of the body ye shall live. So you have this tension again between living by the guidance of the Holy Spirit or living according to the lusts of the flesh, of the sinful nature that we have. And we are called to choose to walk by the Spirit. But then it says in verse 14, For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. If we are guided and led by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, by the pillar of cloud and pillar of fire, if we walk after this pillar, if He is the one that leads us and guides us, then we are the sons of God. We belong to God. This is one of the signs that you belong, and that I and we belong to God. When we work by the Holy Spirit. The world cannot understand this because it doesn't even understand what the Holy Spirit is. It doesn't have this connection. It's like trying to explain to a blind man how beautiful the sunrise is or how beautiful the sunset is with all the colors and all the beauty and everything it has. You can try to ex explain it with words, but he, has, he have never seen it. He cannot fathom how beautiful it is. And likewise, to, tr to try to explain what the Holy Spirit is, what is walking by the Spirit to somebody that has no connection to God, it will be completely strange and foreign and not understood. But, for the children of God, they are called to walk by the Spirit. And this is what characterizes the children of God. So if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. And all that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let us add to this what Yeshua says in John chapter 10, verse 27. 
Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 27, Yeshua says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give, they follow me. The flock of Yeshua, what characterizes them is that they hear his voice, and they follow him. He knows them. He is in a personal relationship with them. In the Bible, to know talks about a personal relationship. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, it says that Adam knew Eve, and then she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain and Abel. So that is a, a, a physical, intimate relationship to know. He knew her. But Yeshua talks about a spiritual, intimate relationship. He lives in us by His Holy Spirit, and we follow Him. That is a relationship that is kept for the children of God. So he says, my sheep will hear my voice. He doesn't say the highest of highest officials will hear my voice. The spiritual leaders from a high level will hear my voice. Only certain individuals. He says, no, no, my flock, my sheep will hear my voice. It characterizes each and every one of us that belongs to Yeshua, every child of Yeshua. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. I'm in a personal relationship with them. They follow me. It manifests itself in the deeds that they do. And where does this lead us? And I will give them eternal life. They shall never perish. So we have this wonderful promise of eternal life. And no one shall snatch them out of the hands of my, out of my hand. There's no greater force that can snatch us against our will and against the will of our Father out of His hand. But this does not mean that we cannot decide ourselves to leave and to stop and to quit following and to deny our faith. We are able to do that and we must not do that. And also in Hebrews, in chapter 3, Verse 14, we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence to firm until the end. So we have to hold fast until the end. We are connected to Christ, we have a relationship with Him, but we have a condition if we hold fast. We also read in verse 6 of the same chapter, it's We'll start from the beginning of verse 6. But Christ as a son over his house, whose house are we? We are his house. We are the children of God. But pay attention. If we hold fast our boldness and the glorying of our hope firm until the end. We have to hold on to our faith until the end, not let go. So we have conditions here. So we need to satisfy to be part of the house of God. To walk by the Spirit. To walk by the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But in order to walk by the Spirit, in order to walk by the fruit of the Spirit, in order to hear the voice of our Good Shepherd, what do we need? It says in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, when Yeshua says to the, talks to the seven churches, to each one of the seven churches, he ends, for example, in uh, verse 7, chapter 2. He says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And then he continues. He that has a ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So that he says that to each and every one of the seven churches. And that teaches me that we need a spiritual heart, uh, spiritual ears. And not everybody has spiritual ears, otherwise he would not need to say this. If every one of these seven churches had a spiritual ear, then he did not need to repeatedly say this seven times. So how did this manifest itself, this spiritual hearing? By the grace of God, we will talk about that tomorrow. So I wish you all a good day and a blessed day. In the name of Yeshua, Amen. Shalom.